Good morning. Uh, I'm Ron Daly. I have the honor to serve as the strategic partner lead for the Kentucky Valley Educational Cooperative, the oldest K-12 cooperative here in the Commonwealth of, of Kentucky. And I tell you what, this is a great crowd. Look at yourselves and keep in mind that all of you are here for one reason, that you all uh, share a vision to improve the quality of life and and uh, create a new economy and an enhanced economy here in Eastern Kentucky. And so uh, we just wanna thank you for your attendance and, and also thank you for, because I, I know many of you and all of you do, are interested in the one key thing that we have to do and that is to collaborate. So why uh, is our educational cooperative uh, hosting an event like this along with the Appalachian Regional Commission and and that's because uh, you know a big idea is on education workforce and economic development and that's because our schools right now are doing a remarkable job educating our children and preparing them to be leaders in the new economy uh, we do not wish to do as what occurs in much of rural America and that is you educate students so that they leave our goal is to do things so that they can have jobs here at home. Um, the K-12 is the largest employer in most of our communities, in most of our counties. Um, our teachers are mentors and are training this new information age digital economy workforce. And uh, they're mentoring our next generation of entrepreneurs. So. We provide a lot of professional development and training for our teachers. And so that's a very key part of workforce development. Uh, in this new digital economy, our students, our K-12 students can be gainfully employed as they're attending school, attending middle school and, and high school. And we're seeing that already. And uh, they can help grow our economy uh, right now. And so we must rethink the way we look at workforce development to, to realize times have changed. And you know, there's been another thing is there's a disconnect between K-12 education, economic development, and sometimes workforce development in, in parts of the country. Uh, I don't think that's the case here as much. Everyone says, says K-12 is a key to economic development, but in many instances, K-12 is not really at the table, or K-12 people are so busy doing their classroom work that they don't have a chance to go to the meetings uh, 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 to participate. So that's part of the purpose uh, of what we're doing here today. Here in a little bit, we're going to show you some videos. Uh, I'm going to change the order because we've got a late start. But uh, these videos are going to show the exciting things that are going on in our, uh, in our schools here in eastern Kentucky. Uh, things are going on here that are not going on in the rest of the nation, uh, and so that's, that's very exciting. Quite often when we look at the data of what we think about Eastern Kentucky, it doesn't look very good. You could almost lose hope. We have the high jobless rates. We have some of the most poverty-stricken counties in the nation, and we have some of the worst health statistics in the nation. And then uh, also we have a, a drug epidemic, a drug problem, similar to what's going on in other parts of the country, especially rural America. But on the other hand, in our, our K-12 schools in Eastern Kentucky, we are leading the state in high school graduation rate. Our schools, <laughs> our schools here in the mountains are leading the state, the Commonwealth, and college and career readiness. So it's, it's, you know, we, so we've got a lot of reasons to be optimistic, especially if we learn from the past. You know, it's hard to believe, and some of us have been around that long. And by the way, that's a reminder. This conference is a little bit different uh, than most. It doesn't have the usual sp suspects up talking except for an older person like me. Most of our, a lot of our panelists are gonna be young people and it's a different collection of people because our youth are the, are the, are the future of our region. But it was 52 years ago that Lyndon, President Lyndon Bain Johnson was in Martin County up on Tom Fletcher's porch and basically then discovered poverty and the war on poverty began. And soon after that, you know, and after the Appalachian Regional Commission was formed, then we had, uh, uh, there's what we call an economically distressed county. So if you look at a map at that time in the 60s, all of Eastern Kentucky was economically distressed. All of West Virginia was economically distressed. All of Southwest 
Virginia was economically distressed. All of Northeast Tennessee was economically distressed. But now look at that map. There's just a few West Virginia counties that are. Basically, I think about almost all of Southwest Virginia has moved out of that category. And, and then also Northeast Tennessee, almost all their counties have moved out. But here in Eastern Kentucky, most of our counties are still in that designation. And so why is that? We've got so many great things going on, but uh, two key factors um, occur, have occurred. Um, and one is that we have not worked together as a, regional, as a region and had regional initiatives. And therefore, whenever we got funding opportunities, whether it's used to coal severance tax or whatever, we just didn't use those funds in a regional collaborative way. So we've got to fix this. We've got to work more closely together, more collaboratively. Uh, we've, got to, uh, uh, we've got to not be competing as city, states, as counties, but you know, work together as, as a region. And the other thing is, it's so easy to do. We have always been wanting immediate fixes, immediate gratification. So we've gone for things that put Band-Aids on the situation. Hey, folks, and I see the judge from uh, Owsley County there, he can, uh, uh, Cal, Cal Turner, he'll tell you that until we had lost these coal jobs, started losing these jobs about five years ago, we were, uh, his county was in desperate situation prior to that. So as we, it, the tragic loss of coal jobs, I mean, that's something we need to address as we look at our economy and help those people that have built this nation uh, get good quality jobs back. But don't keep in mind, but before we lost those coal jobs, we were in trouble and we weren't doing all that we could do. And so that's what we're here today to do is to put our minds together and be thinking creatively and collaborative. And uh, so the purpose of today's event is to, uh, is to, uh, to gather our, uh, your ideas. Uh, we're filming and recording and archiving all the sessions, so any ideas you have will be there. You'll also see a sheet of paper as you registered, as you came in. If you didn't get one, we'll have some more here, that where you can make sure you fill out and tell us what your ideas are uh, to how to grow the economy. And so if you don't see something that you're interested in, and you have some ideas, you want to talk to people about it, we have what's called the unconference, pick your own topic over in that room, so you can sign up uh, to go ahead and do that. Um, and uh, so you do that. Uh, anytime you start trying to recognize people, you get into trouble, but I know we have at least one state representative here, uh, Representative Cluster Howard, so we're always pleased when we can have an elected state leader here. Um, and we've got some other people will be introduced a, a little bit later on. Uh, we also have I'll mispronounce her name. I'm, 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 I have trouble with Appalachian names, let alone. Uh, but Amelia Halilovich is the Education and Workforce Coordinator from uh, uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission. And so, Amelia, will you mind stand up? There you are. So, so pleased to have her. <laughs> I know we have uh, we have some other judge. Uh, we have some county judges going to be here. Judge Cale uh, Turner from Owsley County. I don't know if Judge Mosley is here. Do we have any other county judges that are here? Well, as the day goes on, we're going to have a chance to introduce some other folks. And he's not on the program until later. But Jay Williams, the director of the App uh, at Economic Development Administration Assistant U.S. Som uh, Commerce Secretary for uh, and the Assistant Director uh, for Secretary of Commerce, Jay Williams, arrived early. He was so excited. So uh, we're excited. Uh, Jay Williams, uh, you'll have a chance to... He's going to be speaking at he's going to be speaking at 12:30. Well, with that, let me go ahead and queue up the one video. We're changing the order of these, but it gives William you a little Boyles bit of glimpse of what's going on here in Eastern Kentucky. As natural scientists, they have so many questions. If you've ever talked to a three-year-old, you know that why is their favorite question, and they, you know, a lot of times we just kind of dismiss them. But I think if if we can give them positive experiences, memorable experiences and opportunities to really and truly engage in deep learning, then we've done them a favor for the rest of their life. Wow! With KVEC reaching across from really preschool to college, we want to try and make sure that kids have the opportunity to sustain that ability to think for themselves. We're in a 
digital economy. The, the world itself is changing. So we have to prepare our students for this future world. So from that, we came up with this idea of creating this Appalachian Technology Institute, which actually started out as a computer science initiative in which we would offer coding classes. We had the largest rollout of next generation classroom technology in rural America's history. Now, as the economy is downturned, coal is not as prevalent as it used to be. We are trying to fill the gap that coal has left. And computer science and aviation are two ways we could do that. In fact, aviation and the aerospace industry is Kentucky's number one industry at the moment. So we want to just provide as many students with the opportunities to go into these booming industries so they can be successful as adults. We found out we could offer this class so late in the school year that we actually could not fit it into the schedule. So I came up with the idea, well, hey, you know, I'm normally here on 7 anyway, why don't we just have class? That turned into, well, I want to be here for my students if they want to be here, and parents have jobs. So I have students arriving as early as 5.30 in the morning, and if my student is here, I'm going to be here. As long as I go to this class, I really don't care. I wake up like 12 o'clock in the morning just to get aviation. <laughs> As soon as I came to freshman orientation, they said they were introducing this new aviation class. I just looked at my mom and said, I have to join this class because, you know, I just love flying. I wanted to be my whole life a doctor, but then this came up and then my whole views changed. I firmly believe that all schools should offer computer science, and I think this new Computer Science for All initiative is so important to this generation and other following generations as a language that should be as native to our kids as English or as any other foreign language because it's kind of like numbers. It's a uniting language. Coding is my passion, really. Uh, I love doing it at home. I love learning about it really anytime I can. Taking this class really has changed my outlook on life and I'm learning how to lead people just through a simple class in high school. We went to the different schools and we introduced coding to the elementary schools and some of the uh, high school students and teachers and we showed them that they were capable of doing computer science that it wasn't something beyond their reach. Like I came in here not knowing much about coding just knowing that I wanted to do it and then whenever we got our first lesson I was like yeah this is actually pretty easy. Being in a class full of guys makes me feel really good about myself knowing that I'm able to keep up with all the guys in this class. I really want to get girls into coding because I know I have a couple friends that are into it but they think that it's for guys they think that they can't do it because they're a girl. And that's not true because girls can do anything a guy can do and they can do it better if they want to. They just have to put like effort into it. And daily, we're seeing the conversation take place between a teacher in Middlesbrough and a teacher in Floyd County talking about aerospace engineering and how we teach a rocket lesson. And these teachers are geographically almost 150 miles apart from each other. We share a lot of materials throughout the whole KVEC district, which is actually really nice because a lot of schools don't have money to buy flight simulators or soldering kits for all their students, so we're able to cross those district lines and share. But they're working together to be able to provide quality instruction to their kids and to be able to, to break down again these barriers that have traditionally been here in Southeast Kentucky. I'm very excited that there's these new opportunities being brought into the area because I felt like we needed something new to help kickstart things around here. I'm, I like that kids get to learn something that they didn't even know that they were passionate about.